Great. All set? Yes, yes. So, good morning, good evening, and Jai everyone. And welcome to our uh, Ambedkar lecture series. And today we have <clears throat> Bhavna um, Shivan, uh, who will be talking on theorizing identity and commemorating past manifestation of lived experience of Dhanaks. The novelty of today's talk is like this is one of the very rarest work done by any scholar in India or abroad or across the globe. So, like it would be very interesting to listen Bhavana and her thoughts or her work on Dhanak communities. So, before we uh, like invite Bhavana to talk, I would like to give her a short bio. Uh, so, currently Bhavana is assistant professor at Department of Sociology. Bharati College in Delhi University. This is an all-woman college. She also serves as nodal officer of, for social media sale, um, Bharati College and co-convener of the um, chairperson, theater, sorry, Chilam Theater Society of Bharati College, University of Delhi. And like the uh, most prominent thing which I saw in her bio was she has a YouTube channel and she also writes academic blog. So I gone, I went and subscribed that. She really uh, is sharing very good ideas and thoughts around her topic of area of interest. So I would recommend, highly recommend you to go and apart from these talks, you can listen her like in future or her past talks on her YouTube channel and can read on her blog. Apart from that, she has also written uh, quite a few papers on academic papers on her topic. And along with um, teaching experience here, she has also been working like for last three years and teaching a certificate course on key concepts of critical themes in sociology at Stephen College and was also a teaching assistant for the course of social stratification for MA sociology in School of Social Science in JNU. And uh, she also has worked as a content writer for Save the Children International Organization and which is, it is based in Delhi. And yes, she's also pursuing her PhD like final year, maybe she will submit. We had just offline talk. She's about to submit. She's working on her data. So great. Instead of wasting time, I would like um, save the time for Bhavna and questions a session. So I invite Bhavna to um, like discuss and like like uh, actually teach her about her work and to like explore. Let 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 us allow to explore what about the Bhavana community and their work. Bhavna, please. Thank you so much. So uh, first, I would like to extend my heartful thank you uh, to Dada Sahib and Dr. Gaurav Patania for uh, presenting this work, which is uh, one of the work on the entirety on the caste dhanak. So uh, I would first give a briefing about what my research is all about and how I came to research about this one caste among all the scheduled castes, that is Dhanak. And then I'll start my PPT and I'll share whatever I have been researching from past five years on the particular topic and on the particular caste. So uh, my PhD is titled as a Socioeconomic Mobility and Identity, a study of two scheduled caste in Haryana. So I'm basically focusing on Dhanaks and then Balmikis. But for today, I'm just reserving myself to only talk about Dhanaks and their issues of identity, self-identification, self-representation, and what is so unique about Dhanak and who are Dhanaks. So tracing the social history of Dhanaks, historical discourse on Dhanaks, tracing the problem of nomenclature, as well as the complexities around what Dhanak is and who Dhanaks are. So my MPhil was titled as Subcategorization of Scheduled Caste in India, uh, talking about reservations and socioeconomic mobility. And from there, I get an idea that uh, we have an approximate 1100 to 1200 caste, which are enlisted as scheduled caste. And on Dhanaks, while studying about it, now completed my seventh year in this research, uh, I was thinking that this one caste do not have any one study in entirety of understanding the social, the political, the cultural, as well as the economic spheres, what are they doing? And their underrepresentation and the gap in the literature actually haunts me to work on this caste. 
so i have chosen rohtak district which is one of the district out of 21 districts in the state of haryana and i have mapped the trajectories of social mobility as well as social identity that is qualitative and quantitative triangulation approach to understand dhanaks their mobility and their identity so i have traced the trajectories at the city level at the town level and also at the village level however today i will be only talking about the qualitative aspect of my research which is talking about identity so now i would share my screen and along with my ppt i will be going into the details of what my research exactly is all about i hope it's visible to everybody yeah yeah we can see it down so, right okay thank you so uh, today my topic is theorizing identity and commemorating past manifestation of lived experiences of dhanaks so i have traced the journey of a researcher from uh, delhi to rohtak district and how my field work started in august 2018 just after submitting my synopsis making schedule for 6 months and then going to the field that is rohtak city was my field which is approximately 80 kilometers from delhi i am placed at delhi and it is about 70 kilometers from delhi so uh, why rohtak and why dhanaks now the question comes down to that level so uh, rohtak is one of the main administrative district since colonial times and dhanaks are third largest scheduled caste apart from chamas and balmikis in the same state and this is the state uh, haryana and the rohtak district which goes under the sub categorization which was the demand which emerges in 1975 from punjab and it goes down to many states that is tamil nadu bihar uh, uttar pradesh even haryana where the schedule caste list was divided into one or more groups on the basis of the inadequate representation of those caste which are most marginalized among the schedule caste so dhanaks came to the forefront after this sub categorization was abolished by the central government and by the parliament and the president because constitutionally we define scheduled caste as homogeneous class and dividing this scheduled caste list is a constitutional feud and we cannot offer any state or governor of the state to initiate such kind of demand and it will further fragments scheduled caste caste of scheduled caste and this demand would go on so that's why it was abolished now again haryana has taken down an initiative of giving this sub categorization demand again to those groups who are most marginalized and bihar still is having mahadalit commission apart from bihar and haryana no other state is right now having this kind of a sub categorization at that forum now that's why dhanaks become most prevalent after 2005 in rohtak district where they started asserting for their rights where they start asserting for their self identification for their self representation and they started writing or rewriting their history through the blogs through having their own oral traditions and using music at their own community level to initiate their identity demand apart from that dhanaks have not been studied part and pass they have been studied part and parcel by other caste groups in specifically north indian states of punjab haryana rajasthan madhya pradesh uh, uttar pradesh and bihar but they have not been studied in entirety so that was the kind of the base which formulated my phd research that i have to talk about dhanaks i have to actually go into the detail who dhanaks are what exactly they are doing 
what is their history of origin that is the social history of origin and what in contemporary times for them identity would mean how would we contextualize identity in active sense when we talk about these caste which are under represented within scheduled caste and apart from other caste so uh, objectives of my research were goes like first it is conceptualizing identity as a concept in an active sense so today i am just talking about one concept of my research which is social identity and for this i am taking the subaltern as well as the constructivist framework which emerges post 1960s that is post independently and we also see the subaltern history talks about the colonial historiography and the mainstream historiography which has not been understanding these underrepresented caste and they started talking about them in the public forum so that how i am dealing with identity also i am talking about habitus that is the bordian concept where we make sense of our belonging make sense of our identity what is the meaning of us and what is the meaning of us formulated in context of other then we have richard jenkins and laura dutele jenkins and also zygent bowman who is wonderfully writing about social identity and how this concept is self reflexive in nature so this is something what theoretically my base for this research is then i am dealing with this one of the important phenomena which after completing my field work in may 2019 i wonder that this thing needs to be deal within my phd so of course when we talk about social identity that's very contemporary in nature but my phd in my synopsis stage was not ready for dealing any historicity or any problem of nomenclature with this caste but when i completed my phd when i completed my field work it came to my mind that it's not only about dealing with social identity in a contemporary times but it also to talk a lot about dhanaks from their history because there was no one book and ethnographic accounts anthropological accounts gazette reports and any other book which was talking about dhanaks as such in part and parcel to other caste were denoting so many traditional occupations to them the one major problem which i came across after completing my field work was there is no one specific occupation of this dhanak caste and this demands that i also need to trace the concept of identity in a very historical sense so this contemporary discourse and historical discourse goes hand in hand and that's how my phd is uh, going about something which has not been dealt in entirety of this particular caste so as you can see i have uh pasted here some photos which were the claims made by several books on dhanak's identity they are the fighters they are the hunters they are the holers sometimes they were the archers sometimes they were musician at the weddings sometimes they were basket makers sometimes they were weavers and all these things were going on but there was no specific occupation which was denoted to dhanaks so that comes down to the level that how you know this problem of nomenclature arises third is commemorating the past and social history of origin now here i look down to the social history of origin of dhanaks from 1881 that is the first census done on haryana and punjab as you might be knowing haryana was the part of punjab before 1966 it carved out of punjab at 10th november 1966 and before that we have to go to punjab libraries to actually have access to all the historical data on particular caste so 1881 denzel abiston punjab caste book says about menial classes or village menials where dhanaks were enlisted as one of those caste which were never specific about their occupation and they were migrating from one place 
to another place and this creates more confusion and more complexity on the part of why these connotations have been associated with dhanaks so while they were migrating from say rajasthan to haryana maybe rajasthan mein they were engaged as a watchman or musician at weddings but while going to haryana maybe that region was not having any musician sort of a work so they started working as weaver so that creates a problem that you know uh, all these things were uh, creating an issue that uh, this would be a very problematic thing uh, which i dealt with in my phd and this is how from 1881 going to jalandhar tracing punjabi literature whichever has been written on dhanaks part and parcel with other caste going to haryana state libraries and tracing down whatever literature has been talked about dhanaks i have done that kind of a historical work in my phd and there is only one work which was denoting a 10 pages history social history on dhanaks that is by munshi ram solanki and it has been uh, posted on one of the blog page uh, of dhanak and uh, this is specifically uh, denoting who dhanaks are talking about dhanaks of haryana punjab rajasthan and delhi and how they have 52 gotras and what are the gotras name and uh, how they were claiming that they were coming out of uh, the dhanusha munni guru uh, from where they originated and they were kshatriyas also at one point of time somehow they were fighting in the militia but uh, when they lose the fight they were forced to delve into another occupations and that's how their status degraded so there are a lot of mythological as well as anthropological literature which is uh, talking about a lot of claims and now these blog pages through social media or use of social media uh, they are portraying that kind of a claims or counter claims of politics of recognition which also my phd is talking about then uh, also i have been uh, gone to the eight localities within the rohtak city uh, which are dominated by dhanak caste and uh, rohtak city evidence the spatial segregation and this segregation segregate several caste on the basis of their mohallas or you can say neighborhoods or localities and uh, within all localities within a rohtak city uh, eight localities are dominated by dhanaks and these localities are very important place for me as a researcher to understand what is social what is a sense of being in this particular neighborhood or locality where these dhanaks are situated and how do we understand their lived experiences what is mean to have a locality of their own so that is my fourth point and fifth is the symbols of assertion now when i talk about assertion of dhanaks we need to understand that assertion of dhanaks is not something which we need to mix with the assertion of other caste which has been there since colonial or post colonial times or nearby the modern or post modern times their assertion is very different and it's a very new phase of their assertion which is limited to their localities however they are of course doing cultural religious and political processions at the city town and village level at society level but most of the time their localities and their neighborhoods become a most important source for them to asserting their right so uh, their identity becomes unique because it's not been more into the mainstream apart from the social media channels more in a social terms it's limited to their localities and neighborhoods so the symbols i will be talking uh, in the later part of my lecture is use of music use of thans that is a shrine a scheduled caste chopals a piece of land uh, which is uh, located there in their localities and this land becomes a materialistic resource for them to assert for their right and then use of social media so uh, dhanaks as i always uh, already said that it's a first systematic study for understanding the social identity of dhanaks how do their claims and counter claims make them unique 
and uh, overview of their lived experiences and development of sense of belongingness this is what my micro objectives of phd is my macro objective which was stated in synopsis was understanding caste and functioning of caste from the below perspective as you know that john p mencher charlesle simon charlesle karant and tk uman talks about below perspective so we need to talk about caste and functioning of caste from the lens of scheduled caste and that's what macro perspective or project of my phd is uh now coming down to the level of problem of nomenclature uh that has been raised as i already stated from the ethnographic accounts and uh, they define them on a very different occupation basis and uh, their claims of origin is also very different some of these ethnographic accounts claim that they originated from rajasthan some claims that uh, they were not from rajasthan they have come from himachal towards uh, haryana or punjab state some claims that they were originally from punjab or haryana so uh, there is a kind of a complexity and confusion of claims of origin of dhanaks then uh, they have a different clans that is apart from 52 gotras they also have 7 to 8 clans which munshiram solanki also talked about and uh, which bagdi and chohan one of the work in uh, punjabi and hindi regional language i have translated it in english for my phd uh, that also is talking about and uh, last is the traditional occupation as i already stated that there was no specific occupation. now uh, some of the demographic picture is dhanaks are the third largest scheduled caste they constitute 11.5% of scheduled caste population and also why they were important because chamars dhanaks and balmikis these three caste out of total 37 caste of haryana state have a very particular jajmani relationship with the land owning caste so half of the time they were also working as a lower agricultural tribe or they were working as a you know a agricultural or marginal laborers at their fields also their women occupy a very important role so dhanak women have not been talked but in my phd here i am not focusing on them in my phd i have focused on one chapter on dhanak women they were working as cow dung makers and they were working as midwives so there has been a history of oral traditions and folk tales uh, in the villages of dhanaks residing in haryana where they have a folk tales and till now also some of the women are working and also rotak and the kalano town which i took for my field work they are very much into dairy production so also they were selling lassi uh, we also called it seed and uh, lassi seed or milk in different areas they were also coming to delhi and uh, women are the major spine sometime in the dhanak households even in contemporary times most of the times they are the one who are the face of you know the kind of economy household economy but of course they are not represented well so that's also my phd is looking into now i have already told that dhanak uh, you know have been into north indian states the six states where they are dominant and they are often been confused by dhankia dhanuk julaha and all that so next slide is basically talking about that thing that uh, these are the major castes uh, which have a affinal relationships to dhanaks and there is a lot of confusion in the literature which i have stated here it's only some of the literature there is a huge literature which is talking about different kind of occupational engagements of dhanaks and like aheria says that they were hunters and folers as i already stated in second ppt that uh, dhanaks also claim they were the folers archers and uh, and hunters so that's how they claim that they are the offshoot of dhanak kabir panthis uh, why kabir panthis because first the profession of weaving uh, if we talk about some parts of punjab haryana and delhi some of the dhanaks are engaged in the work of weaving and if you ask them uh, maybe the you know first generation or second generation or maybe the third generation uh, you ask them what your first generation was doing they will say they were working as weavers so uh, that's how you know this weaving and also when you ask about their religious icon uh, they will say that kabir is their religious icon kabir is their cultural leader uh, they uh, 
get that kind of a sanity and emotionality with the kabir wani so that's association also you could get within the households of dhanak in contemporary times and also their claims that in history they were associated with kabir uh, then dhanuks okay so dhanuks are basically sometimes dhanak slash dhanuk comes into the view and dhanuk also can be in up who are traditionally occupied as a scavenger so there is one work on lal begis and uh, dhanuks of joel kabilian i have met him uh, in center for science and humanities and uh, his work is also an exceptional work who's talking about lal begis and dhanuks and slightly is touching about this kind of a nomenclature and uh, we had a talk of half an hour and uh, then he was shocked to know that sometimes the dhanaks and dhanuks could be used in the north indian region simultaneously or synonymously then julaha of course julaha in punjab caste denzel abistan uh, also was divided on the basis of muslim and hindu that is hindu julahas and muslim julahas but uh, there is some instances that where dhanaks got converted into islam or dhanaks got converted into christianity also in some parts of punjab and rajasthan so there they got the name of muslim julahas so sometimes they got confused with muslim julahas also then lastly uh, domes uh, as we talk about domes of up they have a particular specific traditional occupation of uh, burning the dead but you know when we talk about domes in haryana and punjab these are somehow having a features like dhanaks and if you talk about other castes the other castes will say domes and dhanaks both are like same what is the difference between them so of course the literature also might confuse and might complex us uh, with the identity of domes or dhanaks or domes versus dhanaks then uh, sanjeev kutshaha book uh, in hindi regional literature talks about how uh, dhanaks could be the offshoot of valmikis too and uh, one of my interview with one of the leader at rotak city also claim that you know uh, if you go in the history of valmikis valmikis and dhanaks or dhanuks were no different they were all same they originate from the same so uh, these are some of the cast uh, where dhanaks shows their affinity and from where this problem of nomenclature arises it's more complex i have just enlisted some of them uh, in total there are more than eight number of complexities which is there within the nomenclature of dhanaks uh, now uh, in rotak city uh, also rotak city is very important for them because uh, this is as you can see in the ppt is one of the important site for them uh, where they migrate from rajasthan for the first time in this region and uh, this was the area which they now have protected under the name of schedule cast chopal and this has a historical value this has a cultural value and uh, this is one of the dominant locality of dhanaks also so you can see that land not only have now materialistic kind of a you know significance but also it has a cultural and religious significance too and uh, because of uh, maintaining the anonymity i have not named the localities of dhanaks but uh, these are the older parts of the rotak city this you can visualize rotak uh, these are the outskirts of the rotak which has been extended with time in outskirt of rotak there is a sector area where most of the upper caste uh, are living but lower caste as this place they have migrated for the first time specifically dhanaks uh, so it's a older part of the city and uh, they mostly are located in all the localities uh, which are you know uh, maybe across the older you know parts of the city these five main localities then further divided into eight localities because of uh, the kind of politics of redistribution by the state sometimes these localities uh, get redistribution again and again so uh, uh, these site are also very important to make the claim of the dalit public for them so that's why i impose that why localities and neighborhoods are important for dhanaks because this is something which is giving them that source of you know assertion and source of symbolification 
uh, now going down to the level of uh, field work and uh, how their assertion and identity is maybe unique maybe new or maybe active within their neighborhoods uh, so first they are using music so uh, this is been done in the form of a satsang so satsang is a religious procession uh, which is not related to any auspicious ceremony this is related to in auspicious kind of a thing when whenever one of the elderly person died in any of the neighborhood or locality uh, within the dhanaks households uh, this group of men uh, who claim that uh, they are you know processing towards being a musician and they are memorizing their past in form of music they go to their household just before one day when you know the tervi or the chautha ceremony is going to happen at night usually they perform the satsang so there are usually two main objectives of performing satsang first objective is that uh, it would enhance the collective conscience and solidarity among them and second objective is that uh, this satsang would actually give them you know that kind of uh, going back to their traditional occupation where they they can use music for calming down their community for extending their support for the community and for calming down those family who are fearing of the loss or fearing of the death or dealing with any kind of anxiety so this is something which this music is providing them and here one of the beautiful work of tia dinora published in 2004 i guess uh, music in everyday life very importantly deals with how we can find music and its relationship and its objective in anything which makes our social which makes our experiences as lived experiences and that's where this satsang has been performed interestingly the people who are engaged in performing satsang during the interview with one of the musician uh, they never charge any money for performing this satsang their main role is that they have to collectively bring the concise and representation at the community and this they think it's their religious and social duty towards their own community people and dhanak music is not similar to chamar folk music this is very different form of a music it's not been written it's not been recorded this is something which by chance i was working in one of the field area and one of my informant informed me that this thing is going to happen why not you join it so at night from 9 to 12 30 i joined them and afterwards i did the interview and these musicians are engaged as carpenters or maybe they are working in a private or a public or a government sector in afternoon and in night they usually do this thing they don't go with invitation they don't charge any uh, money from it they just go out of the sincerity and these are the three musical instruments which they use for performing the music now uh, dafli khartal and iktara uh, this is dafli this is khartal and this is iktara these three musical instruments have a historical significance in history of haryana i have chance of visiting kurukshetra university and there is a one museum dedicated on history of culture of haryana and there you can see like how these musical instruments were there since beginning in the history of haryana and how people were using it so they are using these only three uh, musical instruments in their satsang another point is uh, their localities and entrance of their localities have a small shrines so mostly they don't visit the temples of the city uh, they visit it once in a year but uh, this temple is made for dhanak caste and these temples are made by dhanaks only and uh, these are the you know jayma chugan and uh, sheetla mata and gurgaon wali mata and chorahe wali mata these are the some important deities for them and uh, they worship them during holi diwali and other occasions and also they visit the shrines whenever there is any wedding or whenever there is a new childbirth or even during the time of chicken pox or measles they visit this another thing is this dada ki samadhi or thaan this is very uh, new 
to me to understand dhanak's cultural assertion or cultural procession in form of this so there is a history of uh, dhanak priest or we name them as bhakt uh, within the history of haryana and these bhakt are basically the priest which are officiating ceremonies or uh, which have been uh, you know asked or in uh, which have been asked by other community people within the dhanak caste uh, to at the matters of difficulty challenges and they visit them and they ask for their advice so uh, bhagat is a very important phenomena and uh, there are some bhagats within the history that is the dalit priest within the history of dhanaks which hold significance and uh, one of the bhagat uh, in one of the locality has been uh, memorized in the form of this than which is also known as a shrine and this have been paid visit by the community members uh once in a year with a whole procession with band music and other things uh but they can visit the than whenever they struggle with any uh, you know uh, medicinal problem or whenever they struggle with any health problem uh, medicine is not working for purpose of healing for purpose of worshiping uh, maybe at the time of wedding maybe after wedding for child birth or other things they pay visit to uh, this than which holds a very important significance and this than is located within their own localities so that is also backing up that sort of argument which i was uh, dealing in initial part of my presentation that why thans and why this dada ki samadhi is you know important for them so they uh, basically denote uh, than uh, with dada ki samadhi so dada is the word which they use for their you know dhanak priest or dalit priest uh now political assertion of dhanaks is through chopals uh, this is uh, one of the locality where you can uh, vaguely see this is written dhanak dharamshala and uh, they have not made this uh, thing into any rehabilitation center because this land is in the between dhanaks and uh, between Caste, uh, Sonar caste. So Sonar says that they are a migration this particular locality, and Dhanaks know they were the first who came here. And Archaeological Survey of India convene intervene in this. They came and they found that uh, Dhanak was saying that they were the one who actually made a kind of a well there, and that well was used for fetching the water. So this well and fetching the water was used for them, and archaeological survey of india finally find the well there and now the land is been given to dhanaks now they are preparing that how this particular land could be used for recreational or rehabilitation purposes uh, it can be used as a community hall it can be used for wedding purpose it can be used for opening up of coaching center or whatever they uh, you know demand of making out of this land uh, this is the second area land this is not under any feud so they have made a shrine and they have also made a park so it has been used for religious as well as for social purposes uh, apart from that uh, social media blogs their caste council uh, which is helping them in the issues of relating to marriage relating to child birth or related to any other issue is fighting for them and most importantly this is fighting for their rights fighting for their representation and fighting from you know social historical and cultural and political perspective that who dhanaks are and why it is important to talk about dhanak not only that they also have a matrimony page so this matrimony page is basically having most of the details of the dhana caste of haryana so haryana have a different matrimony page and then delhi has a different matrimony page uh, other states could have different matrimony page i only know about two so uh, they also have a matrimony page where they are focusing that uh, you know how the marriages and all things should be sorted and uh, this pal could be also used as a community hall where you know uh, the people who are from uh, lower class background within dhanaks can have wedding in uh, you know a uh, very few money or uh, you know they can have wedding of free also so that's why also this land becomes important for those people uh, who are not well off in their families and they can use this land for marriage purposes of their kids uh 
lastly i would say that these are the caste based organization uh, of dhanaks uh, so these are specifically talking about dhanaks uh, because dhanaks assertion is very much new in this scenario and uh, we need to talk about through the lens of the dhanaks that's why these caste based organizations uh, gain a lot of significance among dhanaks and uh, these are also present in a form of website and also they have a whatsapp and facebook groups uh, also there are some songs of protest which has not been published but it was sung by two of my respondents and uh, by their consent i am uh, sharing it with you so the song goes like uh, you know uh, that they both of the songs are denoting towards that you have to stand up for yourself you have to talk about yourself you have to make place for yourself and that yourself would start from your own locality and neighborhood level and then it will goes to the society level and these are the religious and political icons for dhanaks ambedkar uh, is leader specifically among the youth it gains significance among the middle age and uh, elder age uh, they think that this lal beg is their main uh, religious kind of a leader apart from kabi lal beg is also uh, one cult which has been uh, there in the parts of punjab haryana and uttar pradesh and many dhanaks and balmikis actually uh, you know worship lal big and they also sometimes claim in their in group affiliation that they are lal begis and kabir as i already told now uh, towards conclusion what my phd is uh, you know pointing towards is that uh, it is talking about dhanak caste that is their self identification at level of social cultural and political sphere their locality serves as a base for their assertion and reconstructing their stigmatized past and transforming it into a assertive one now this thing needs to be understand very clearly that this is a very new kind of a work and half of the time for dhanaks also the questions i was posing to them was very challenging and it was equally challenging for me to question those people sometimes it was anxiety for me as a researcher that maybe i am not uh, you know responsible for originating any seed of assertion because uh, that's not what i want out of my own agenda but i want it coming from their own level so of course uh, working with this kind of community is always challenging and full of obstructions and it took a lot of time of me to actually be open with them and they being self reflexive about you know this thing so uh, my phd research is not a blueprint of who exactly dhanak is it's just a very initial kind of a argumentation that who dhanaks could be and uh, tracing the historical origin and then talking about that you know these are the kind of things how they correlate their historical past with the contemporary discourse and uh, rewriting their history through blogs rediscovering their identity talking about their values talking about their identities in a very different and a unique way use of music use of symbols they are not doing symbolic reversification as such but they are inventing their own symbols so uh, that's why i just leave on this note that it's a long way to go the journey of awareness and self consciousness has just begun for dhanak and for me as a researcher working on dhanaks and uh, thank you uh, this is the first study in its entirety of dhanak cast hope the audience suggestions and enlightening discussion will make way for this research in a public forum in coming years and thanks for providing me this precious time special thanks to gorav and dada sir thank you thank you so That's much all. thank you so much bahuna uh, it is really like enlightened i mean say like it is very interesting to know about this one of the caste which is like less discussed in academia uh, so before like i go with my questions i would like to invite audience or anyone who has question for her or any like you know if you want to discuss or engage with her like from your perspective anything so please uh, either raise your hand or you can post your questions in the chat
येस नवीन प्लीज गो आहे नवीन यू आर ऑन म्यूट लास्ट यू थिंग सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल माय बिग थैंक्स टू कंप्लीट दिस मच वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आस्पेक्ट बिकॉज आई एम फ्रॉम द राजस्थान सो एंड माय पार्टनर इज फ्रॉम हरियाणा सो आई हैव आल्सो द रिलेशनशिप विद द टू स्टेट्स एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट आई डिड सम फील्ड वर्क in november 19 the, the nearby district of uh, haryana is called the fatiabad yeah and there is a there is a dhanak basti and near the dhanak basti there is a frosa ki lat what does it mean it was captured by the moguls and himayu and frosa so it is also one aspect and most all the areas dhanak basti the kavir panthi is also so i was looking two things simultaneously because i am from the social medicine background and later i also went to the gurgaon chudal mata khodyar mata jogyan mata something like that so that also did uh, that also completed in uh, so be- because i am from the social medicine background so my whole idea how how we can uh, reclaim and i think the professor almost is touched the sa- aspect in the one the midwife kind of things so because my whole idea how to reclaim the ayurveda is not born from them it is something did from the beaker section committee like thing so that doctor symptoms and mistakes so my whole idea if uh, how how we can uh, uh, do uh, uh, the reclaiming reclaiming aspect of the midwives and the ayurvedic kind of how we can do because there are very limited uh, studies on the dhanak community there is no and if you see in the dhanaks so they both midwife ka kaam karte hain rajasthan mein bhi karte hain wahan bhi karte hain to usko hum kaise le sakte hain agar ye thoda us par bol dengi it will help me a lot thanks a lot yeah so my salute to uh, professor it's a absolutely very wonderful thanks a lot once again yeah thank you uh, so uh, dada sahib should i uh, respond one by one or should i resp- i think i should respond one by one yeah this uh, uh, this two questions will be very different from each other so we can answer this yeah, yeah. and we can ask professor jagannath to ask the question after this okay okay, okay. Uh, thank you uh, navin sir for uh, you know giving such peculiar observations and it was great to hear that fatehabad district you have touched it's one of the i think uh, most concentrated schedule caste district ambala is the one fatehabad is the one and i think sirsa is the third uh, district which has uh, you know a uh, majorly concentrated schedule caste population uh, also a uh, midwife kind of a thing i would tell that i had been to some of the households which told me uh, you know uh, there is a village named as baroda uh, where uh, you know uh, you can find some of the traces of uh, midwife and also uh, maybe if you touch the rural sector or the semi urban sector not the urban sector you could find still the traces of the midwifery and dhanak women association with it because in the urban sectors the question of uh, dhanak women is slightly different they are mostly engaged in occupation like bangle selling milk selling coming to the you know cities and selling that especially kalano town also you know made them uh, available to the dairy production or they are working as in factories also because industrialization has huge impact in haryana state specifically in rohtak diwani and all adjoining areas so uh, i think my suggestion would be that um, though uh, i didn't get much chance of going specifically into midwifery and uh, connecting it i only get a chance of uh, talking about on the base to interview schedules and 40 case studies i did for my research uh, but then i think apart from that maybe in the rural sectors uh, you could find such traces and also uh, i am not getting the name of this one village which is 
in the Haryana state only, which has, I think, all the households of Dhanaks only. It's the all Dhanak dominated village where you might find such instances of reclaiming spaces and specifically in form of midwife. So maybe the rural section would provide you the adequate detail of midwife and this kind of occupational engagement of their Dhanak female. Thank you. Uh, Professor Jagannath. On mute. Yeah, you are on mute. You are on mute, Professor. Can you please unmute yourself? Okay. Uh, uh, mine is very simple uh, uh, observation. Uh, uh, the work has been a very, uh, very important. The way you have uh, tried to diagnose the, uh, the sociological uh, issues, uh, I think it's very uh, commendable. And it's very scientific and also uh, it's uh, objective oriented. Only uh, last week I had an opportunity to listen to a similar work, but in a different context. In Brazil, International Institute for Environment and Development, uh, they had a you know, community housing in the urban, cooperative housing. So what I want to drive parallel to your work is this. See, this indigenous knowledge, the communities, it is their real strength. My observation is in the, in, in the 80s, there was very much focus on the indigenous knowledge. And now it is not so, it's not so. If you see the uh, scientific, uh, especially, uh, uh, you know, Holland in particular, they had a very good, intense, aggressive research uh, all over the world. Okay, let me conclude by saying that uh, your work has got some relevance to our Karnataka situation also. Mm -hmm. See, we have in the Western Ghats, the medicinal plants, medicinal plants, the medicinal plants and the dependent population. And a good number of Jai Bhim communities have got this indigenous knowledge. They were skillful. They were knowledgeable. They were trying to, uh, you know, uh, elevate the difficulties of the community in the moment of disasters. Your work becomes relevant here. And any, any work on the community, you know, indigenous knowledge and skill. Because uh, COVID has come now. There could be one more uh, timid next one. Next one, COVID, something else. See, these things are happening time and again. It is climate change, it is disaster, or pandemic. So I want to conclude by saying that the work should be taken further and uh, academic institutions, both in India and abroad, to, to take a clue from this, that indigenous knowledge, indigenous community, they are the real owners of the uh, capability to uh, you know, enable community to take care of their environment, to take care of their livelihood. That is the essence of 1992. According to me, Dr. Ambedkar, uh, main theme is that only. Community enabling to take care of its environment. That way, uh, Jai Bhim, I want to thank you for a wonderful work. Thank you. Keep it up. All the best. Thank you so much, sir, for such a wonderful suggestion. I would thank keep you. this in mind. I like it. It's, it's my very good work. Work. Thank you. Now, daughters like you should make the difference. That will make a that will make all the uh, you know um, vision available for younger generation. In fact, yeah. I, I refer to two uh, psychology students. Your presentation, Thank one you. is in UK, another is in Mysore. I don't know whether they could make it. You know, um, you. it is uh, always welcome. Please carry on and please try to share your papers. I, I put my email ID in the chat box. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So kind of, so kind of. Take care. Thanks, uh, uh, Tandele. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, I'm not uh, pronouncing your name properly. No, no problem at all. No problem. I think there Thanks. was just one question in the chat box. I'm reading it. Uh, yeah. My question is adaptability to the by the community. I think uh, it's the same. Yeah. yeah. The, okay. yeah. No, I, I only have put it. See, okay. The capability these communities have yeah. got to not only make themselves elevate from the problem, but also take the whole society together. Because ये जो आत्मा निर्भर है ना कौन सा आत्मा है कौन कौन निर्भर करेगा
they're all traps. You may see, it's like ICU, it's like oxygen, it's like medicine. No, no, uh, no. So curative is very much required, but preventive is more important. Yes. And your work becomes relevant there. Any such okay. work, indigenous knowledge, skill, enabling community, they will be able to live through. It's happening all over the world. I'm sorry for taking more time. No, uh, no, this no. is the way. It... No, no, it's okay, sir. It, 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 this is the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the best. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Thank you, sir. Himanda, is there any question around anywhere? Otherwise, I have a question for her. Okay, you'll wait. So, uh, first of all, Bhavna, like from an academic perspective, your work is like, you know, it's like too complex and you have like, means I, I don't feel any biasness of any of this thing while you are, when you are, when you're analyzing and when you're doing that work. So uh, now when you're talking about identity, like I have a curious curiosity to understand that because you very um, nicely analyze that the identity and the complexity around generations, like older generation, they go with lal, something you said, sorry, if I'm not able to do it properly. And the younger generation is moving towards uh, like Dr. Ambedkar as their icon. And there are some community who claim that they, they, their icon is Kabir. And uh, the music uh, the music or the instruments which you showed, I find the relevance in the, of that music instruments and all that in Sikhism also, because when the Iktara, Iktara and all that, I have been seeing that in Gurudwaras around those places and all that. So like, I feel like uh, this community being third largest community in Haryana in that area, with these many complexities or uh, like so many things around them. So how tough is for them? Like why I'm saying this? Because I, I go, I, I stand by the clarion call which Dr. Ambedkar gave, like organize, educate, organize and agitate. So organizing, like I'm coming to the question of organizing. If for political or for any assertion, social assertion or anything, you talk about SC Chopal and you talk, you spoke about those things. But then if, the, like if, if by your observation, if you see these many diversities and if there are so many complexity around the identity and like this thing, how it is possible or as a researcher, what do you see could be like uh, the best form of like coming with, with studies or coming up with like project or bringing in together, what could be the possibility of organizing them with, I'm not saying like identity, single identity, but organizing them and like uh, joining the each other's like uh, umbilical cords together. And making them feel united with other, like not only with their caste, with others, Valmikis or any other, like Chamars or everyone through anything. So, like, if you could please answer or like discuss this, it will be really wonderful. Uh, thank you uh, for asking that question because uh, that's just one part of my PhD which I presented. So, I have dealt with these things uh, mm -hmm. in my PhD also, and uh, also. In advanced research, I will be progressing with this. So uh, organizing thing is a little tough for them. First of all, uh, Dhanak is a community which is, uh, you know, uh, retains a problematic feature that, you know, uh, maintaining them at a collective level somehow takes a lot of time. And uh, till now, uh, we see that... Uh, uh, can you hear me properly? Yeah, it's breaking, but yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, talking about Dhana community and uh, how, uh, you know, their organization should go, it's a little problematic thing for them because, you know, uh, maintaining them at one collective forum is still thing, uh, it's still a thing which will take much more time. And also I have seen that in a generational aspect when I was mapping mobility of them. So younger generation is more into going towards making Ambedkar as their icon and going towards national leadership because this Danak leadership has been divided into regional state and national leadership. Mm -hmm. And national leadership is holding conferences and organization at a much broader level. And most of the people specifically in Delhi are going to this organization, having an active membership and organizing themselves. But when it comes down to uh, Rotak, uh, it is like little problematic for them, mostly the youth or mostly the middle-aged men wants to go 
to these kind of organizations and wants to go for mm. the protest um women also even if they are educated they have not been outside more and uh, also there could be one other chance where they can organize well is like some of the respondents claim uh, who were working as assistant professor or in a school they say that this said schedule cast shopals should be rehabilitated in that purpose where we should open a coaching center where we should open maybe ambedkar school where ambedkar teachings and other teachings of philosophers and ideology should be taught to our community where we talk about history of our community and we talk about progression of that community so for me i think uh, that schedule cast chopal when it rehabilitated in a more modern education sense and that educate agitate and organize thing should come up in that you know platform that ways it will improve their collective representation collective conscience and also it will give them that kind of a platform where they can organize well and as i said that for them the form of assertion and protest is very new so uh, you know this form of assertion will take some more time for them to collectively represent though they have one collective representation with other caste uh, but that's for sub categorization that's for anusuchit jati varg a mahapanchayat and that's for the sub categorization where they are having uh, them you know for uh, you know uh, balmiki is going to sansis khatiks and other caste that is 36 caste apart from chamar so that kind of organization will take some time among dhanaks because still the generational gap and the kind of ideologies they are following is different and this lal pegi is uh, basically lal beg uh, which is a guru and also there is a guru guga so these two uh, religious uh, gurus have been worshiped by dhanaks and balmikis of haryana parts of punjab also and even in up so uh, joel kabilian work is working on dhanak dhanuks and their relation to lal pegis so this lal pegi guru is basically uh, you know worship during diwali and it also demands some sort of animal sacrifice which i have also dealt in my phd and also uh, this lal pegi is something ki every sunday uh, what they do is ki they put a diya in front of the hookah hookah is a main symbolic uh, feature uh, to smoke uh, within haryana and this thing is been used to memorize lal pegi so these are some symbols which they are using but generational gap is so somehow that at that level that you know older generation is more into cultural and religious processions and younger generation is more into political so they need to combine with each other to organize well i have a question like connecting question but we'll go with dinesh and i will ask you yeah. dinesh please can you go ahead great maybe he will rejoin okay wonderful uh, yeah dinesh can you please unmute yourself nice okay yeah. i was trying to unmute it it was not happening okay yeah. so so let me thank you first bhavna i think it is very uh, wonderful uh, presentation uh, i just uh, like when i was hearing uh, her presentation i mean your presentation uh, i i like just i just is a reflection not a question maybe or one i i'll put one or two questions in between so i studied uh, one of the buksha community i mean that's also very uh, close in uh, in udham sinagar district and there is another community musahar i mean you may be the well aware uh, that i have also uh, studied and when i was uh, looking from the historical point of view i found uh, like the the bhankar community the musahar i mean the the kind of very the cultural uh, the identity like a kind of the nomenclature the the occupation like starting from the the like as a archery as a uh, uh, a kind of uh, dependency on the the primary uh, resources so so that kind of lot of like a, a similarity not in term of the uh, like a kind of uh, in overarching manner but in in very very key uh, themes that uh, uh, you have mentioned so so that is one uh, kind of i can see and uh, then there is a uh, a few thing also like a, in a, in a contemporary we can see the organization like the chopal so in in a musar community also like there is a similarity called the musar manch if you see in uh, in a bihar also in every district or i think uh, uh, there are like a kind of uh, musar manch are there and uh, but what the difference like i have found in your presentation i mean about the uh, the bhankar community and the musar 
that the bhankar committee look uh, seems like a kind of in a in a more progressive i can say like you mentioned there is a they have this page of uh, the matrimonial page they have the facebook they have all this and when i see look back to the musar community in many of the uh, the places even the the social status is just so down even their uh, kind of the occupation like they are still stuck in their their agricultural uh, a kind of uh, occupation like they are still not able to uh, make any much different so what what my uh, point uh, is that like a, uh, so there is a lot of similarity that is one the second point i if you can highlight few things like a, when we say the the bhankar community like the historical account i can see so and the in the contemporary like there lot of uh, i will not say the progress but but there are like a trying to make a difference and trying to make kind of um, like a meeting the the mainstreaming uh, society and kind of the reality so just my question is there any kind of like a kind of support like is there any civil society work is happening with the bhankar community if you have come across uh, to just to share that one and also uh, like a, what kind of like a, the 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 political uh, the organization like a, they are having like as you mentioned that chol but this uh, uh, the chol is also like a going to kind of like a contesting elections or uh, trying to uh, like a kind of reclaiming in the society because of their identity so uh, that also if you can uh, like kind of uh, uh, put some word on that and uh, and yeah i mean i mean they are very very interesting and thank you for sharing i mean this a uh, very uh, like a kind of i i just wanted to i was thinking i mean the, when we when we study like as uh, one of the professor just mentions and when we study some kind of like a, uh, a very ethnographic and very anthropologic uh, or like a, the reality of the the people they like a, still struggling in the society i mean somewhere like a, the before independence or like a, a century back i mean they were in, in a very very similar kind of situation uh, i can see from the example of bhankar kanti musair and also the buksha you know trakan yeah thank you i mean these are just few reflections okay thank you so much i think also the question in the chat book sub, uh, chat box about the bamsa members i can take mm. both of them uh, because somehow they are related with the political uh, sort of organization or community support uh, so see of course uh, kanchan chandra in his work uh, have uh, talked about the abhujan samajwadi party its historicity within the states of punjab and haryana and how scheduled caste was you know uh, going to work it's this kind of ambedkar leadership under this you know bahujan uh, samajwadi party and you know they were correlating with that at one point of time but that's around 1970s 80s and 90s afterwards you can see that specifically dhanaks of haryana and of rohtak district where i conducted my field work they are somehow more related towards huda government what the political uh, you know kind of uh, alienation of uh, them is going towards some of them and also uh, the leadership in that manner has not come across at a very uniform level among dhanak specifically of rohtak district because uh, you know in every locality they have a locality based leadership so what they say is like swadesh kirad is one of their leader from the dhanak caste which got uh, you know that kind of a significant value when he tries to burn himself during the 2005 protest just after sub categorization was abolished so there is a labor chock at rohtak city level where he tries to burn himself and where he tries to organize you know that kind of a struggle and uh, that's where you know some of the dhana caste started mentioning him as a leader then of course the ex mayor of the rohtak city was from the dhana caste itself and uh, her father in law was also one of the leader from one of other locality within the rohtak city so what i observed is it's not uh, mainly uh, national leadership right now which is working for them it's more the regional leadership in the form of the locality based leadership working from them and the political consciousness and awareness still needs to work in a very high manner and positive manner among dhanaks uh, it's more they are working towards the social history even you can check their blog pages it's more they are writing down their blog history they are demanding out of the government that you know we want all these uh, you know kind of a uh, uh, all these kinds of uh, uh you know rights and welfare or other things uh, from uh, you know uh, the state but still there is no uniform level where they can say that you know this party is what they are denoting and the bmsf kind of a thing is mainly under the 
youth which they are following and this is not particularly in rohtak so i have went to the kurukshetra there is a group of uh, balmiki and dhanak youth which are formulating that kind of a organization they organize small uh, you know festivals or small talks or small uh, that kind of a conferences where they are talking about dhana caste and how or whom they should you know uh, go for the leadership or following of the ideologies but uh, this is something uh, where the middle age the younger generation and the older generation needs to come at the uniform level it still will take time and uh, most of the times the kind of religious and the political icons when i was asking them about ambedkar kabir lal begi uh, even bahujan samajwadi party bamsef or other parties they were very confused about it and their political answers was not well furnished in that manner so it will take some time because right now they are more focusing on social and cultural cultural assertion they will come down to the political level once they come out of the social and cultural assertion and it's only about one district one city uh, one town and two villages so of course i have to go beyond these uh, you know a city town and village to understand specifically uh, what dhana caste really is going into the direction of political as such much of my much of my thesis is based on social and cultural history and political as such which my field work was conducted in a area was not that point which i get to know more so maybe in my post doctorate i'll focus on some other areas i'll expand my thoughts and then i would uh, get a better chance of understanding this aspect among thanaks there is one more question bhavna like uh, where dhanak okay. stand in context of social economic and political mobility okay so um, as uh, the census reports and other reports already claim that you know still they are mostly engaged in the unskilled occupations and semi skilled occupations uh, very few of them are in skilled and professional occupations and uh, also few of them own land so the land holding kind of owning thing is also less so their mobility may be in comparison to the rural and the semi urban areas is comparatively better in the urban areas what i conducted my field work and how my 250 households data is going towards and also there is been opening up of lot of opportunities in form of modern occupation and modern education which has given them chance to actually leave uh, you know that no specific traditional occupation and moving beyond in the society they also have developed some good social relationships and networking with other caste and communities but their mobility in comparison to uh, you know other dominant caste or other uh, you know caste within the scheduled caste is still at not that par level and it will take some time for them uh, you know to mobile themselves because uh, their consciousness and awareness about the reservation benefits again with my interview schedule which i have conducted was not you know that kind of so that's why also uh, they still lag in that kind of a mobility in comparison to chamars and balmikis which are slightly dominant to them in comparison to uh, other caste Uh, in rohtak city and also you can uh, see that the sub categorization was based on this uh, in proportional distribution of benefits and then how these most marginalized caste or marginalized caste within schedule caste was not having a say in political legislative uh, educational and economic sector so uh, they have been mobile but in urban centers we can say that they are having a better chances of mobility and opportunities in comparison to rural and town mm. you know centers but they have opened up more into entrepreneurship so they have opened up the shops specifically balmikis have opened up the shops of them and also dhanaks have opened up the shops of them maybe in their neighborhood or maybe at the society level which gives them a chance of mobility so entrepreneurship could be one reason for them to attain mobility in urban centers great um so i have like i have been wanting to ask you one question so like um have you got opportunity to look at this community from ambedkar feminist perspective like when i'm saying this ambedkar feminist perspective i want to know and understand the role of women because i i i see lot of matas like their devotees local devotees but then how 
uh, what is the role of the uh, role has what has been the role of women in like procurement or like even like de learning or like conscientizing process like what is the role or or still they are like in in sync with the other scheduled caste community or other indian society so can you please Like... Uh no, actually, uh within Dhanaks, uh that's an interesting fact that you know Dhanak women, specifically of youth, are more educated than the Dhanak men, and also they are more keen to be conscious in the ways of getting educated. Specifically, teaching is the one profession which was mostly of their choice that they want to pursue. And then Ambedkar as the icon, and how Ambedkar reading and leadership of Ambedkar would be important for them. uh is one important aspect which i get to know more from the female respondents in comparison to the male respondents and uh, this was specially among youth and if like social mobility i analyze on the qualitative terms in terms of aspirations so if i talk about aspirations of dhanak men and women dhanak women aspirations are marvelously overwhelming when you hear their stories and you know uh, my long interviews with them was just like i was awestruck that you know maybe at the age of 18 and 19 they have so much aspirations to study uh, and also they have connections and networks with other caste women in the college level and even at the employment level and also they want to change the situation on the basis of the inter caste marriages talking about caste you know uh, endogamy should be broken up and they should uh, work towards you know inter caste marriages inter dining inviting their friends to the households and interestingly they don't want to imitate the upper caste women what they want to do is ki we want to have an equality relationship with them that you know you don't have to imitate us we don't have to mm-hmm. imitate us let's just have a very smooth friendship between us you come to our house we come to your house and you know the education basis and all the professional basis should be maintained with that so adhanak women of course has more aspirations more mobility and they are consciously more aware of their rights and also uh, you know the scenario of the marriage maybe their parents when i ask about them for them getting them married at the age of 18 to 29 was a big question but for females they even if they get married by 21 they make sure that after completing 12 they do the bed course that is a teaching course mm-hmm. so that and also the nursing this teaching and nursing is the most you know uh, interesting choice for them to go and then they can seek employment mm-hmm. so they don't have to be in the households and work just as uh, you know to raise the household economy wonderful this is very interesting have you like written anything about like uh, about danu kumain or no not yet <laughs> wonderful i'm really looking forward that to read this because this is very unique and and it would be it would be very inspiring for other sc communities to learn from this danak girls and women yes so wonderful and even interestingly i will share one more thing that you know i just uh, memorized of that that in the 2005 protest when the males were not going to see what's happening in the labor chok these females were going and having a eye ki what is mm. happening and uh, most of the time when i ask about that uh, do you know that sub categorization happens in haryana state because it's a long back it's 2005 and i was conducted in 2018 and 19 it was like mm-hmm. more than a decade i was conducting my field work and these women were like even the middle aged women were interesting yeah yeah we heard of that ha uh, labor chok ki baat kar rahe ho and then also some of the women have newspaper cuttings of that time so they showed me so that shows that you know dhanak women is more assertive and conscious about you know all these things even if they say ki we don't know what actually we get out of it but they have a interest of listening and uh, you know enhancing their consciousness in that way so that was interesting uh, wonderful although i know dhanak community has long way to go but yeah. this women fit into dr baba saheb's uh, definition of development of society it can be seen by the development the women has made in their society and i really feel that these women are going to be the leaders of their own community like yeah. looking forward a wonderful uh, i think there are no more questions so on the auspicious day of 147th birth anniversary of shah maharaj i we could listen bhavna talking about dhanaks one of the less research and less work community and the most wonderful thing was to learn that dhanak women are the most prominent and dominant uh, like characters of that community so thank you so much it was wonderful to listen to you and before we conclude again professor jagannath is there to share his views 
So yeah, please go ahead. You're on mute, Professor. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, you see, Dr. Bhavan uh, Bhavana, uh, one important observation I want to make. See, you are very good in telling that how the older generation and new generations at one stage converge. They may converge, but I want you to look at the second line of defense. The second line of defense means the teens. See, always we look conventionally old generation, a present generation. But the, the second line of defense, the younger generation, what is their priority? How much of information they have got? For example, if you translate all your work into the local language and give to these young people, it makes a lot of a difference. Wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So again, thank you once again. Thank you, Bahana, for your wonderful talk and looking forward to reading your paper on role of women and hopefully uh, we can in invite you once more like once you finish your conclude your phd to, yeah. to learn more about your observation and this thing how your data talks and says thank you so much Thanks. bye thank you thank you so much for inviting me